Hello dear beloveds, I am so excited to be joining you today with an incredible guest. We're going to be joined by Mitle Safi and today we're actually doing something that I have never done before, the Institute's never done before, um, but it's becoming more and more obvious to me that the the women who are coming through the third level training and who have graduated and we're now up to our third intake are just absolutely so incredible that part of my mission is to continue to shine a light on them and also to give you access to who they are and what they're doing so that you can better understand what the third level is, what an intuitive guide is, what does an intuitive guide even do, um, and really to, you know, to bring about, um, I guess more of a behind the scenes kind of look at what is possible for you if you decide to make your life on that path of sacred service as an intuitive guide. So this is an opportunity I'm going to spend some time with Mitley now talking to her about what has happened in her life and her path of sacred service since uh, completing the third level, uh, which she did in July 2017. I'm just trying to remember where we are. And give, you know, really just give us all an opportunity to kind of take a look behind the scenes. So we will wait until... Um, um, I see Mitle jump in there and then I'm hoping I can add her because it says everyone's watching and look at all you gorgeous creatures who are watching. Hi, so lovely to see you all and hopefully I'll just be able to add her onto this call. Mitle is here, yay, and we're going to bring Mitle on camera and the technology gods are smiling. So hi gorgeous. Hello, I can't hear you. I can see you. You look beautiful, but I can't hear you. <laughs> can you hear me? Oh. I can. I can hear you now. Yeah. All right. Let's <laughs> ditch the headphones. That's clearly not. Have working. to go free range. Free Headphone range. Free. Am I the right way up? Sometimes I'm like that. No, you look beautiful. You're vertical. You look like you. You know, you look just gorgeous and glamorous as always. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> So I was just introducing you a, a little bit, but I'll do it properly now that you're here and just really talking about the fact that this is the first time that I've ever done anything like this. And it's really incredibly exciting. It's sort of shining a spotlight on the amazing women that I get to hang out with and call friends who have gone through the third level. And giving, giving us all a bit of an insight as to what it is that an intuitive guide actually does um, and what it looks like. So Mitle is just, well, I mean, I call Mitle a spiritual leader more often than she is comfortable hearing. I'm pretty sure that she, she'd like me to be quiet about that. But she is. And the reason that I know that is because when Mitle speaks, people listen. And the the influence that you have to me is so much bigger than even the words you say. It's the energy or the vibration that you hold. And so as a result, in the time since graduating from the third level, Mitley has created an incredibly powerful path of service for herself as a sacred circle holder. And I'd love for you to tell us more about what that is and, you know, what does a typical day look like for you on that path of service? Oh my goodness. Uh, thank you. Thank you for saying such lovely things. Um, yes, it does make me feel a bit, I don't know, awkward. I guess I'm still embracing that term, but I think it looks different for everybody. So um, and a typical day for me, it's all about service. And, and we've spoken before about this, but for me, I really aim every day to see the magnificence in every woman that crosses my path. And I do that through circle medicine. So really, whether I'm actually holding a circle in person or whether that's through my Facebook groups or the sister mind and through my own daily practices, it's really constantly trying to bring us back to, I guess, to being awake um, and to seeking the truth with yeah. humility and being willing to you know, being willing to see my own magnificence and also those of the women that I serve. Um, it's an interesting, it's a very interesting journey. I saw a client quite recently. Um, I think she might be watching actually. And she said to me, the difference in me from when I met her to when I went into service mode was quite 
breathtaking this is a sort of change when we are in service and it's definitely where I feel most yeah. comfortable yeah yeah and it and it you know and it it's obvious that that is absolutely the the path because it's working and it's unfolding and I think I think that's what I love about your path is that when I think back to where you were when you came into the third level you knew that you were on the path of service but you were still working out what that was and I think one of the things that the third level does is it helps you kind of shake off all the kind of illusions of what might be to actually go through that process to discover, well, what is it that I actually care about? And I've seen that happen for you, not necessarily during the third level, but certainly in the months that came after that. Does that feel mm. like a sort of accurate description of what happened, getting shaken? <laughs> yeah, ab no, absolutely. I think that the, the, the year of the third level is – it's so many things that it's hard to describe because it is totally soul shaking. And, you know, I jumped in, I came to, I think, one or two workshops with you and I was like, I'm all in. <laughs> Whatever this is, I need to do more of it. But the third level itself, you know, you talk about an accelerated awakening program. Well, that, that means it's not fun. <laughs> yeah. And it's not necessarily <laughs> comfortable. And, and in fact, it's uncomfortable and it is very challenging. Um, and it can, it really takes you to places because there is no real way to step into that path of service without facing your own fears um, and not just facing them, but actually working with them, dealing with them and welcoming them in because you now understand what's on the other side. So that's a whole journey yeah. of, yes, I'm all in and uh, excuse me, I'm all out. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the exit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no exit. <laughs> And then you discover that there's no exit. Um, so yes, it's an incredible, it's an incredible path. And when I look back and when you invited me to do this, I was really trying to reflect because it's very, it's very easy to forget how far you've traveled because where you are right now in this moment and where I am right now in this moment is incredible. Um, I get to hold circles for women. I get to use all of my skills. I currently get to travel around Australia teaching other women how to hold circles. And when I think of the women that turned up to that first workshop with you, it's, it's almost indescribable, that journey. Um, and yet there have been parts of that journey where I have wanted to exit. Sharp left, please. <laughs> um, and yeah. I think I said this to you that, you know, even when we finished and I graduated last year, I think it took me another, you know, I, I think I described it like the fourth trimester. Like there was yeah. still a lot of integration to have to, to take place. There was, um, it was almost like, can you stop the world? I need to get off for that little bit, but you can't. So just yeah. to keep going with that, just to um, allow that to settle, allow that to integrate and really claim it um, yeah. and step fully onto that path. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's it, isn't it? That it's the stepping fully onto it. And Caroline Mace talks about this, that you can't stop and start a mystical life. You can kind of stop and start it, you know, I'm spiritual and I'm going to try this thing and I'm going to try that. But when the mystic in you gets awoken and you are on that path of sacred service, it's it's 24-7 and it's not like there's any place to hide from yourself or from, from the world at all. And... I can see why back in the day the appeal was to literally go and hide in the mountains and sit in a cave in the snow and not have conversations or, you know, children or anything else to distract you. But, you know, I think what you evidence is that you can do it in the world and it just takes such fierceness. And and I what I love is that you you have done it. You You took the offer. And, you know, where you are now is probably not where you thought you were going to end up when you took on that training but I, that's what I also love as well is because you know let's talk about that the intuitive guide you know it's not it's it, what is the intuitive guide what I mean at the heart of everything you do what what is it that you are doing as as that regardless of how you do it what what is the actual thing in there for you well it's, it's that move it's that shift from fear to love and it sounds so simple and it, it's not, it's not that simple either for yourself or to help others to do that. And I think um, the word love of itself <laughs> can be complicated for people, but really facing those fears and being able to step, I don't know. I think for me, it's about meeting your truth. That's how I see 
moving from fear yeah. to love. It's really yeah. meeting that truth within and coming to a place where you truly understand that you have everything you need within you. Yeah. Um, and claiming that and understanding the power of that um, and understanding the responsibility of that and knowing that when, um, you know, my victim archetype, she's still there, we're still good friends. <laughs> Um, but I can't hide in her anymore. So, you know, I can throw a tantrum and, <laughs> and I can try, but yeah. the, the excuses aren't there. There is no, there is nowhere to hide because you have those tools. And so it's hard for me really to separate what I do with my clients to what I do for myself because they're so yeah. interwoven. Um, and yeah. that, that medicine for me is circle medicine. It's sisterhood. But the, the tools and the practices, there are the really incredible tools and practices, you know, learning to read the, you know, the energy system, learning to interact, learning to be able to see what's happening for people where their fear is. But only by taking them to meet that and showing them that they can do that themselves yeah. is really where the service is. And without that, there's no, there's no point. So, yeah. you know, we talk about you have everything within you need. Sometimes you need a guide just to like shine a light. Yeah. And then you have to be prepared to take that. Yeah, I love that. I love that description. And I know, you know, that's definitely how I describe it, that that making that permanent shift from fear to love. And I think that comes from Marianne Williamson, that idea that we can actually rewire our neurological pathways as well as our energy body as well as our physiology to make that shift and and that's what the miracle is it's it you can't you can't get someone to do it for you but you can certainly have someone to show you the way and I think your description of an intuitive guide is that's just so perfect it's like you don't always need them but when you do by god you need them and it's like if you don't have them how do we rehabilitate from fear like I don't know how people are meant to do it I and I don't think we are meant to do it on our own I think We've got to do a lot of it on our own, but there are moments, those intersections where you need to know who it is, who is your medicine woman, who is your shaman, who is your circle holder. And I don't, I don't know if the world has that, but I think we're bringing it back. I think we're bringing it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I think when I look at when I first um, came to one of your workshops, that literally, that did open, I think you've got a testimonial from me somewhere, that that was that when I finally understood what it meant to be cracked open and let the light in. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's an expression we've all heard, but when you actually feel that and you come away from something knowing that nothing will ever be the same again, when you have that piece of something about who you are and why you're here and you know that can never you can never unknow that. It can never yeah. be taken away from you again. So you can still go off the path. You know, you can still fall off. You can still have moments <laughs> where you don't yeah. necessarily show up as your best self. But you get back on. You get back on the path because you can't unknow what you now know. Um, yeah. And that, to me, has been one of the most powerful parts of it. I, I can't there is no it's like there is no choice in fact I'm making no sense now am I because there is no choice you step <laughs> onto that and then you're just like well bugger it here I am <laughs> I no you're making perfect it. sense <laughs> it's perfect and it is it's it's freedom it's but the thing is it's freedom and it's responsibility and I think that's what we're also not trained for by the contemporary spiritual age is we're not, you know, this word resilience is coming up for me because I'm studying with heart mass at the moment yeah. and that's what they're all about. But what I would also call spiritual fierceness, it's that I don't, I don't think we're necessarily taught how to sit with the discomfort of becoming bigger, becoming more glorious. And I think that's also what the intuitive guide does. And I know that's what you do mm. for women you know, individually as well as circle in your circle work, because I know that your circle work is your primary focus, but I know that you also do work one on one. Is that that service still available? Can people go and book private sessions with you? Yes, they can. Absolutely. Um, a lot of what I do now is that intuitive guide is in mentoring women stepping into that role as circle holders. And that has been so exciting, um, yeah. just, you know, in almost designing, not a, not a modality as such, but just using what you mm -hmm. have taught me, using my experience of working one-on-one -on -one with clients as an intuitive guide and taking that into circle work. So 
I use those skills and those tools. If you have a one-on-one -on -one session with me stepping into that role, you know, we go on a beautiful journey to meet the soul of your circles, to really yeah. connect yeah. with your path at a much deeper level. Yes, you know, there's practical stuff involved, like booking a venue, but the actual work, the actual medicine of soul work is, is to connect with the, with the soul of your, your circle and for you to be able to step into that role as an intuitive guide. So, I mean, I work with women who are in the third level, who are starting the third level, because all of this comes together to hold yes. space, to really hold space for others. That's where my intuitive guide role comes in as well, because that's where I, I can literally hold the vibration of the group and know when we need to change things up. I can feel mm -hmm. into the women who are there. So it is, it's a complex, it's a complex role, whether I'm working in groups or one-on-one, -on -one, but it's, yeah. it's powerful and empowering. And I think that's the most important part for the women who come, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or within yeah. a circle space, they, they get to meet themselves in that space. Yeah, I love that. And I love that description of, you know, it's understanding vibration or frequency above and beyond anything else that's going on in that in that space with those with with the people that you're serving and that you know that is for for me the third level is about training priestesses of consciousness or priestesses of vibration above all else because you're thinking then in spiritual terms or spiritual sight symbolic sight archetypal sight rather than dealing purely at the the kind of human uh, 3d level and i think that's you, you know that translates to every context you know as a mother as a partner as a you know your neighbor I, in any context if you can look beyond the human fear story that someone's presenting you're going to know how to serve them no matter what you do on that path of service and I think that's exactly what you're describing there yes yes I think that's what I was describing I think you described it better <laughs> <laughs> but I love the I love the fact that you know, the, the other thing about this, this training that you are a demonstration of is that it isn't prescriptive. So it's not like, yes, there is a modality, but within the modality, there are all these different tools that can be used individually in, in any kind of order. And that I know you have really taken the method and made it your own and, and, and extended it. And, and that excites me. That's exactly what I want to be seeing. That's what spiritual leadership is to me it's like take this and see what else is possible with it and and i really do love what you've done with that i think you know deassembling and putting things back together is you know that's spiritual innovation and um i know i'm I sound like i'm just singing your praises but it really excites me because i see you doing you know the, really understanding your worthiness and your spiritual self-esteem has has absolutely meant that now you are running with this thing and you're going to change the world you know you will i feel quite confident about that thank you i'm doing my bit i think <laughs> look, i think that's part of what the third level gave me though and when we it's really it's so as i said before it's difficult to remember how far we've come but you know the the women that joined the third level my self-worth issues were or issues you know <laughs> complications, whatever you wish to call them, were pretty apparent. They were very, very obvious. And even though I had started to hold circles, I was doing it from a very timid place. Like the, the call was there, the desire to serve was there, but I didn't have the, um, the scaffolding to do it. I didn't really have the capacity to hold space yeah. that I now have. And so that journey has brought me to a place where I have the tools, which is important. Like you do need tools, you need scaffolding, you need to have confidence in what you're able to offer when you step into this role of service. But on top of that, it's that confidence in myself, but that belief that, you know, I myself do nothing. I totally trust that I am a vessel or a channel for whatever needs to come through for that session. I totally trust that I can set an intention for that safe container, that safe space, whether that yeah. is for a group or one-on-one. -on -one. And yeah. I believe that it will be for the highest good of myself and everybody who is there. And yeah. that is a powerful shift. And that is faith. You know, that, that is an understanding that there is so much more than me going, oh my God, I don't know if I'm good enough to do this. And maybe I don't know what I'm doing. Like none of that becomes relevant. That may still come up just before. <laughs> and I yep. share with my circles. I plan my circles meticulously. But once I actually step into them, you know, that falls away because it's all yeah. there. But I 
still have a great respect for the women that come. I have a huge respect for the sacred nature of this work. And therefore I show up as my best self while having yeah. absolute faith that whatever needs to come through will come through because I have the tools, the training and the support behind yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's so, so powerful. And it is that, you know, what is, what is different to going and learning a particular technique or, you know, learning a particular modality or even learning a philosophy versus saying, here's my life for a year. I'm handing it over is that you, you're, you, you're showing up to the infinite with, with absolutely no reservations, even if you may have reservations later. And you're, you're basically saying, yes, make my whole life holy. Like I, I'm not excluding anything out of this. And we've often talked about how our service is our medicine. We say this all the time, that whatever it is that we want to offer is actually what we need to receive. And that to me is the difference between an intuitive versus a mystic or, you know, someone who does this for a living versus someone who's on the path of sacred service is that you would never, you know, you know, when you've stepped out of that flow state and it doesn't matter where it is or when it is, you, you know how to correct it, even if it takes time because the ego is stubborn and all the rest of it. And it's a whole of life commitment. And I think that's, that's very unique. I don't think there's a lot of opportunities. We don't enter seminary anymore. We don't go and give our lives to God in religious organizations in that way. But I think our soul still craves that kind of whole of life experience. That's my feeling. I crave it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think I love the way you kind of perhaps distinguish between intuitive and mystic. And I think it's, again, it was a term that I was quite resistant to. There was a lot of resistance for me in the third level. Um, these terms that we're really, I think, reclaiming as well and having to deepen our understanding using language very intentionally, intentionally yeah. using language very consciously um, and becoming more comfortable with terms, uh, you know, mystic, priestess. What does that actually mean for us in this day and age? And for us, modern day mystics, our our lives are our spiritual practice and you know i often want to run away <laughs> and i think yeah. it'd be great in a real temple it'd be wonderful but you know i have a partner and a son <laughs> and they apparently want me to hang around and so whenever that does you know leech in and i and i find myself feeling that sort of frustration rising i have to remember that that is part of my spiritual practice that is part of why i'm here it's a huge yeah. part of being of service as well and yeah. so finding a space where we can bring all those together is for me what you really share and teach and again that empoweringness of you know yes you teach a modality and I um one of the reasons I'm so drawn to that is because of your commitment to very high standards your commitment to excellence so that if I have that modality in my toolkit that it will be a gold standard as an intuitive and that was you know that was important <laughs> to me when you're learning but then you do encourage us to you know learn it so that you can break the rules and it's such powerful advice it's like, okay i can do that i've seen so many clients and it's worked now what can i do with it now how can i use it on my particular path of service yeah. so we're not yeah. being trained in something that you can never uh that requires no creativity we're not being trained in yeah. something that is like this is what you have to do now forever yeah <laughs> and you, yes. you can't waver from this but you have that to come back to and to be honest you don't even have to yeah. love the modality it's the tools that yeah. make it up and it's what it can yeah. do for your clients um yes that that is so special and i think you know, things like uh the micro method as you know i'm a big fan of the micro method like shortcut like hack yeah, yeah. <laughs> and again that's really powerful for clients because once they've left whether it's using the micro method, using tapping, using these other tools that you can share, then they can continue this work once they leave you. They don't yes. feel like leaving, you know, a counselor's office and you're out there going, hmm. Yeah, now what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Had my hour. Yeah. <laughs> now what? Yeah. So I love that. All I'm, of that together. Yeah, I'm, I'm so grateful for, the, for, for that reflection as well because um, it just... I mean, that's music to my ears. And I think the word you used is, is so important there. It's the creativity that the soul needs to create. And if you're just mm -hmm. using a prescriptive version of someone else's idea, someone else's method or modality without feeling like you can innovate, then we mm -hmm. are, you know, we're not actually 
progressing anything. And we live in such an accelerated age that what was a thousand years ago appropriate is no longer going to serve consciousness with the rate of awakening that is currently happening. And if we don't innovate and it's also you know i'm going to give myself props here i think it's the mark of a leader not to be afraid that what they offer will change in the hands of others i mean that's what should happen surely that's what should happen is that if you are offering something that people can pick it up and run with it and i i love what you shared there because that that to me means that's success to me that means i've done a good job is that you are so in your spiritual self-esteem that you do want to innovate and create and keep asking what else is possible and 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 serve in more and more ways i mean that's the mark of success for me so thank you i feel really good yay this has been awesome <laughs> I'm well, no, really no, you know i think from that point of view that is the mark of a of a leader because i think it's quite unusual to be you know taught something and not then for you to have fear and say well no you can only do it my way because if you yeah if you don't do it my way then that means my way is wrong and I, and I can't deal with that so yes, being able to allow um, the third level graduates to go, okay, how can, how can I do this in my own way? How can I apply this to the, what I, how I'm serving my particular yeah. path of service, which may be one-on-one -on -one sessions in an intuitive guide. It may be as a circle holder, it may be bringing all of your other modalities into yeah. play, however yeah. that looks for you. And yes. yes creating what is going to be of service for your clients and that's exciting and that's fun so exciting. i mean i'm just thinking about some of your sisters in your year like amy um who is a yoni massage practitioner and uses the tool the intuitive guide in that work and i just think oh my god how could I, I could never have imagined that and it's different to what i do but she does she what she's done for yoni massage i think has taken it to another level she's changed yeah. the game and you know that's all of her knowledge and experience including her training as a midwife and you know looking looking at the incredible women who have graduated like Emma, Emma Turton, the most incredible medical intuitive. She's just absolutely, I believe, changing the game. I think she's a world leader in the way that she, she uses her understanding of the human body, the subtle anatomy. And it's like, if I had said, please never ever change anything and don't go further than what I've taught you, these things would not have been born. Um, in, and it, you know, I, yeah, I, I do think that there is so much power in, in, gathering amazing women spiritual leaders together and and that's that's kind of it you know i i can die happy now i won't die just yet <laughs> not yet not yet five thousand love you've got a while to go oh yeah that's my vision five thousand i'm just checking the time for you because i don't want to i know you've got an international client today because you're you know an international intuitive guide um but i do i do feel like you know i want to ask you if there's anything that you would say to someone who is considering the third level, who doesn't know if it's right for them or who thinks, you know, who just doesn't know yet, is there anything that, that you want to share? And it doesn't have to just be all the good stuff because you've been very honest about how hard it is. And I, I'm grateful yeah. for that because you've got to know this stuff. But yeah, anything that you think someone should know if they're thinking about taking this path? Um, I, well, I think we've covered a lot of it. My thing, to be honest, would be to, to book in and have to have that interview with you because... Yeah you can obviously have a feel and ask ask those questions or i'm willing to ask answer questions obviously to yes. me it's definitely um it's that threefold path is it's 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 a heightened spiritual awakening uh, awakening or a accelerated it's heightened as well accelerated spiritual awakening personal development and also you know business development and therefore it it seeps into every area of your life. Yeah. And so the reason I wanted to touch on the fact that it's difficult is because this is a 12 month commitment. So yeah. even though I did what, you know, where's the exit? There is no exit. Yeah. <laughs> so being able to stay true to that. And I think having an awareness of what you're committing to. Um, but most importantly, you know what? I think if you're feeling it, you know what you've got to do. Like it's, it'll be that almost like a compulsion that's calling yeah. you towards that. And yes, you know, there are practical considerations, et cetera. But even if you don't think you want to be an intuitive guide, which I didn't, I did it mostly for spiritual and personal development um, and had no idea how it would change my life. But being able to live your own life without um, 
I don't know, without seeking outside of you. You know, we talk of this has come up today, which is why it's in my head, but without, yeah. you know, the, the trinkets and superstitions of the new age. And, and I'm yeah. so grateful that you are one of my, I think you were my, like my second spiritual teacher, mentor, guide, because I've never been down that route. So I, I've always understood from learning from you about that power that we have within us. And don't get me wrong, yeah. I love my pretty Malabies. But... <laughs> But it is living, and I and somehow I'm trying to explain it to my partner, this living intuitively, which isn't about, I'm not out there saying, if I see an owl today, I know that I'm on the right path. I'm there thinking, oh, I need to speak to so-and-so, and they ring me. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, again, it's a silly example, but it's that. It's like this, it just works. Life just works. And when I can allow it to do that, it's so incredible. And as soon as I step into my own way and start thinking, well, you know, if I count 10 number plates between here and school, then that will mean that I should go to Melbourne for my um, sister. And so, you know, the only thing stopping me from booking Melbourne is my own fear. No sign is going to confirm that I should come to Melbourne. And so yep. just that, you know, for your own personal life, for your own development, for your own spiritual development, it's it's a really incredible year. But it... it yeah. It takes commitment, <laughs> and you won't always like it. Yes, <laughs> and, and, and that's like okay. <laughs> I I love everything you're saying, and I love that example. I think it's perfect. It's yeah, you are you're you're the power. You're creating the number plates. You're creating the owl in the tree, and also creating the person who called you. And you're also creating a Melbourne tour. So I do look forward to you sharing your dates with us, so that we can. <laughs> Proclaim it to the world that Meetlay is coming to Melbourne. It will be an amazing opportunity to train as a sacred circle holder, but also to sit in circle with Meetlay and, and to experience her grace and the power that she brings to really invite you to meet your own power because I think that is, is your superpower. Um, you make everyone feel their own authority and their, their rightness, and I think that's, that's a gift, baby. So, you know, I look forward to seeing you in Melbourne. No, no negotiating on that one. <laughs> She's like, Thank okay. Um, and I am going to let you go. And look, we're already getting requests, requests for <laughs> Melbourne coming in already. So we're going to have to book that one in now. Um, and I, I'm so grateful for your time. As I said, this is the first time we've done this to shine a spotlight on the graduates of the third level. And I couldn't imagine anyone more perfect to, to speak with first off, off cab off the rank. So thank you for that. And, and thank you for giving people an insight to what it's like, because I think it's really hard to make a decision. You know, even though the decision might be already made, it's really nice having someone else's perspective and, and what it's really like. So yeah, you're awesome. You know, I love you. <laughs> you. <laughs> you're awesome too. You're all awesome. Yeah, we're all awesome and hopefully that's, you know, the whole world is going to know that. Every woman, every woman's going to wake up to the priestess within and, you know, that that's pretty much when I think we can retire, when when everyone's done that. So what an incredible <laughs> we got some work. Will be. Yeah. 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 Have a beautiful afternoon, my darling, and thank you again thank for joining you. us. And, you know, any questions for me or Mitley, please just message us. Please join Mitley's group, The Spirited Sisterhood, or you can go to her personal or her business page, um, Mitley Southey, and um, contact her that way as well. And I'm sure she'll be happy to answer any questions or hit me up. And you know where I am. So, yeah. Mwah. Thank you, Mwah. my darling. Have a glorious day. Bye. Bye. Oh, can't hit my button. My button's stuck. Hold well on.